I kind of like the superhero thing. What could be more awesome than having superpowers? I can shoot lightning bolts out of my hands. Kaboom! I can fly. Swoosh! And all the girls think my outfit is really cute. Okay, okay. Maybe not all the girls. To top it off, I've got the most awesome sidekick ever. Ronald isn't just my main bro. He's arguably one of the smartest kids on the planet. Without him, there would have been no way I would have defeated Huddy, my arch enemy from school last year. And with Hoodie out of the picture, I can kind of just chill. Crime here in Littleton, New York, has been the lowest it's been in decades. Because all the bad guys know they're going to get their butts kicked and get kind of dirty up my city. Even Mayor Malley said, the city of Littleton owes the super duper kid a tremendous amount of gratitude for making our streets safe again. And with the streets safe from criminals and no villains with powers like mine, I can kind of just be a normal kid. Or so I thought. Maya Gonzalez is witty, tough, really smart, and not to mention, really pretty. Maya's family moved here from Mexico a few years ago. When she came to Booker T. Washington Middle School, she barely spoke a word of English. But in less than three years of living in the United States, not only did she learn the language, she quickly rose up to the ranks and become one of the smartest students in the school. She ranks at the top in every class, except science. There's no way brain boy Ronald is letting anyone steal that title from him. That nut named his hamsters Bunsen and Burner. I mean, come on, Ronald. Anyway, it took me a little while to get up the nerve to say hello to Maya. But when I did, I was pretty smooth. After some coaching from our Spanish teacher, Senor Montalvo, I knew just how to roll up on her. It was lunchtime, and she was sitting all alone at a table near the back of the cafeteria. Ronald was nudging me to go along and say something. Come on, SDK. Don't call me that in public. Fine. If you don't go say hi to her, then I will. Okay, okay. I'm going. I knew what I was going to say, and I was going to be smooth saying it. Yeah, the smoothest guy in Booker T. Middle School. That's me. So I tossed a breath in my mouth, checked my hair in Ronald's extra thick glasses, which was too easy to do because the lenses are about the size of two small planets, and glided over to her table. Just as I was ready to make my move, Donald Rump, the biggest bozo in the school, slapped the tray of food I was holding everywhere. Peas, carrots, milk, and the world's worst meatloaf flew everywhere. The milk fell on me first and splashed all over my brand new sneakers, which despite being brand new, have zero traction. I took one step to avoid the onslaught of food and slipped and fell flat on my butt. Ow! As I lay pathetically on the floor, vegetables bombarded me like green and orange bullets falling from the sky. Then the meatloaf, AKA death loaf, fell directly into my mouth as I screamed and almost choked to death. <laughs> of course, this caught the attention of the entire eighth grade. Everyone burst out laughing at my downfall. Even my best bud, Ronald, traitor. For about 10 seconds, I felt like the biggest loser in the school until I heard the most angelic voice in the world. Are you okay? Maya took a napkin and wiped the milk off my brow. Oh yeah, I'm cool. This isn't the first time a school lunch has almost killed me. I'm just lucky it wasn't the chicken. There's no way I would have survived the golden nuggets of doom. <laughs> she grabbed a few more napkins, took the peas and carrots out of my hair, and wiped the gravy off my face. Think I must have looked like a used barf bag. Thank goodness cell phones aren't allowed in school, because I'm sure a video of peas and carrots meteor shower would have gotten a gazillion hits on YouTube. I don't mind going viral for saving the city, but not as a bowl of succotash. After Maya was kind enough to make me look human again, she invited me to sit and share her lunch. 
Siéntate. What? Please sit down. Oh, sure, thanks. Here was my chance to wow her with my extremely limited Spanish. Muchas gracias, Maya. Oh, de nada, Javon. Hey, you know my name. See, si, of course I know your name. You're in my class, and the teacher seems to call on you more than anyone else. You're obviously very popular and smart. I guess you could say that. All of a sudden, I could feel Ronald's breath smell like a bucket of wet pencils breathing down my neck. Hola, mi mamre is Ronald. ¿Cómo está usted? Sneered at Ronald, whispered in his ear. Show off. Mi nombre es Maya. Muy bien, señor Ronald. Rainboy was grinning from ear to ear. It's nice to meet you, Ronald. You're known as the smartest kid in school, and the fact that you can speak Spanish so well is pretty awesome. Oh, shucks, Maya. Oh well, looks like lunch is over. I'm so excited to get back to science class. Mr. Sykes said he got new microscopes for class projects. Woohoo! Oh brother. Maya, do you mind if I walk you back to class? That's really sweet of you, Javon. Maya said while she flipped her hair. It was like just in the movies. All slow motion like. It's like time stood still. Soon. I just melted until Pencil Breath Ronald shouted. Hey, Javon, mind if I walk with you guys? <clears throat> I mumbled under my breath. Meet the Thomas triplets, Tracy, Tanya, and Tammy. These three young ladies have brought fear into the hearts of every student in this school, and a few teachers. By the looks of them, you'd think they were perfectly harmless. Cute, even. They look like bronze-skinned Barbie dolls, but act more like Chucky from the slasher flicks. Their baby faces create this amazing illusion that they can be trusted and even admired. But make no mistake, the treacherous three, AKA the T3, is a three-headed monster built to cause havoc and pain. Tracy is the leader of the three. She can make a girl cry just by staring into her eyes. She seems to hypnotize people and make them crumble with just a glance. Tracy is so mean, she once called the police on a kid's lemonade stand because he didn't have a permit to sell beverages. Luckily for the kid, the cops showed him how to get a permit and even bought a cup. I think the kid's name was Danny? Then there's Tammy, who has the voice of a banshee. I swear she can break glass with her high-pitched screech. <laughs> and when she laughs, I'm pretty sure she's communicating with hyenas somewhere in Africa. <laughs> Last and definitely least is Tanya, who is as smart as a basketball. She rarely speaks, but when she does, it usually starts with, yeah. Despite being triplets, they are not identical. Tracy wears pink. Tanya wears yellow. Tammy wears purple. Sadly, everyone knows this because when they introduce themselves, they'll say, Hi, I'm Tracy Pink Thomas. And I'm Tanya Yellow Thomas. You get the picture. The three of them sit next to each other in every other class. Whenever one of them does something they think is cool, clever, or funny, they simultaneously snap their fingers. Really loudly. I don't know how they're capable of doing it so loud, how they always do it in sync. It's kind of scary. It's more like they're clones than triplets. After the meatloaf fiasco, we were sitting in science class, which of course is Brain Boy's favorite class, when Mr. Sykes asked, Who can tell me the difference between a proton and a neutron? Ooh, I can tell you, Mr. Sykes, is... No, not you, Ronald. Let's give somebody else a chance. Fine. How about you, Tracy? Well, both protons and neutrons are present in the nucleus of an atom, 
but a proton is positively charged and a neutron is neutral. That's correct, Tracy. Well done. Ugh, that is so annoying. Nobody asked you. And how does an electron come into play, Maya? Unlike a proton, an electron is negatively charged and is spread around the nucleus. Whatever. Whatever. I knew that. Okay, class. Tomorrow we're going to focus on the science of sound and the power of vibration. Nice job, everyone. Have a great day. Hey, Maya, wait up. What are you doing after school? I have a big math test tomorrow and I really need to study, but I'm free on Sunday if you'd like to do something, Javon. There's something about the way she says my name. It makes me want to fly, literally. Sure, Maya, Sunday it is. And good luck on your math test tomorrow. I waved goodbye and turned to my next class. Hey, Ronald shouted, bumping into me so hard I shot a lightning bolt onto the floor. Fortunately, no one noticed. Dude, so what's up with Senorita Cutie Pie? <laughs> Ronald, you're too funny. Looks like I'm taking her out on a date Sunday. Up top. As we high-fived, I accidentally shocked Ronald, and he yelped out. Ow! Oops, sorry, bro. Maybe you can invent something to minimize the shock. Maybe instead you can stop treating me like I'm a microwavable dinner. That really stings. So where are you going to take her? I don't know, maybe Crazy World? We both looked at each other and said, Nah! nah. Unlike most of the students at school who get picked up by their parents or take the yellow bus, Maya walks home. Maya's family believes in hard work and self-reliance, and considering Maya only lives a mile away, walking is a piece of cake. It takes Maya about 30 minutes to walk home if she takes Main Street. But if she goes behind the school, there's a path that cuts about 15 minutes off her time. The path goes through a pretty woodsy area in the beginning. And after about 10 minutes, there's a big clearing called the ball spot. A lot of kids play softball or soccer at the ball spot. It's also the place where a few gangs will come to hang after hours. On this particular day, Maya wanted to get an early start studying, so she took the path. She walked with her younger sister, Maria, who is in the second grade and loves school. Anything having to do with school makes Maria happy, from the Pledge of Allegiance to the final bell and everything in between. School puts a smile on Maria's face. Maya, how was your day? It was pretty good, sis. This cute boy named Javon asked me to go out with him on a date Sunday. Ooh, are you gonna kiss him? What? No, I think you're watching too many soap operas with Mama. He's just really nice. Unlike those awful triplets, they're so mean. What did they do to you, Maya? Yeah, what did we do? Tracy pushed Maya from behind. When Maria and Maya turned around, the treacherous three were standing behind them, arms crossed with the smuggest looks on their faces. We don't, we don't like, like you. you. How do you do that? Do what? Never mind. Well, I don't like you either. Oh, yeah? As Tammy pushed Maya into Tanya. Oh, yeah? As Tanya pushed Maya into Tracy. Oh, yeah? As Tracy pushed Maya onto the ground, Maya fell and bumped her head on a rock, bruising her temple. Maya! <laughs> Oops, you shouldn't be so clumsy, Maya. As the girl snickered, Tracy grabbed Maria by the shirt and said, if you whisper one word of this to anyone, you'll regret it, understand? 
Maria nodded her head as Tracy pushed her down toward her sister. The three skipped away while twirling their hair and giggling. <laughs> Maya, are you okay? I'm fine, Maria. Are you? Maya dusted the dirt off her brightly colored skirt. I'm okay. Out! Maya yelped as she touched the newly formed bump on her head. I guess I'll be wearing a hat for the next few days. Hey, Dad, what's for dinner? I yelled, busting into the house at top speed before realizing I made a big mistake. I mean, hey, Dad, how was your day? My dad is all about respect. We greet each other kindly in this family, although it pains me to be nice to my little sister, Denise. I do it because if I don't, my dad catches me, he'll make me clean the garage, or worse, under my bed. Great recovery, son. My day was good. Being a local TV weatherman is kind of like being a punching bag or a teddy bear. When the weather's bad, the public beats me up like, like I control the weather. When the weather is beautiful, like today, everyone wants to hug me like a teddy bear. And to answer your original question, we're having spaghetti for dinner. Your mother performed a complicated surgical procedure today, so I want to make sure that dinner's perfect. Would you mind making the salad and setting the table, Javon? Your mother and sister should be home any moment. Of course, Dad. The men of the house got this. As I gave my dad a high five, a spark shot out and shot out of my fingertips. Woo wee! What in the world was that? You shot the hair off my head. Dad, you're already bald. <laughs> exactly. We both had a big laugh and <laughs> finished preparing the dinner. After dinner, I helped Denise with her science homework. She usually doesn't ask me for help, so she must have really needed it. I love being a big brother even though she doesn't make it easy. Last week, she put gum in my hair. The week before that, she put shaving cream in my sneakers. And just yesterday, she put olive oil on my toilet seat. When I woke up and went to go to the bathroom to do my business, I sat down on the toilet and slid to the floor. All I could hear outside the bathroom was her laughing her butt off while my butt was on the floor, all greasy. I can't stand her and love her at the same time. Thanks for helping me, big brother. I immediately looked up, thinking something was gonna fall on my head. Then I looked around, waiting for some catastrophe. But everything seemed okay, which made me even more nervous. What are you looking for, Javon? I'm looking for your usual prank. I know you're up to something, Denise. Not this time, I can be nice every once in a while. Cool. Thanks, Denise. You're not so bad after all. Good luck on your test tomorrow. As I walked out of her bedroom, I didn't notice the string at the bottom of the door. I tripped over the string and landed on my butt. The string was connected to a bag of flour that was above the door and fell directly on my head. Poof! I looked like a dusty ghost. <laughs> Mom! I screamed while spitting the chocolate flour out of my mouth. Mom and Dad ran upstairs, only to see me on the floor, looking like a piece of chicken before going into the fryer. Next thing you know, we all were laughing at the top of our lungs. <laughs> <laughs> I really love my family, even Denise, sometimes. After a one-hour shower to get all the flour out of places I don't want to mention, I went into my room to play video games. Maya, are you okay? Yes, Mama. I just fell and bumped my head on the walk home. I'm fine. Oh, let me get some ice for your head. Maya looked down at Maria and mimed. Maria nodded her head. Maya, here is a nice pack. Ow! Mama gently placed the ice pack on a bump as big as a golf ball. Now go and lie down for a little while. I'm making a huge dinner. Why, Mama? We are having Nana Hilda come to stay with us for a little while.
Yay! Ouch! Okay, Mama, I'm going to lie down. I can't wait to see Nana Hilda. I love her. Me too. She's coming all the way from Mexico to spend some time with us. I'm so excited. Maria, why you don't go with Papa to pick her up from the airport? Sí, Mama. Two hours later, when Maya woke up from her nap, Nana Hilda was lying beside her. Nana Hilda was full of such wisdom. You could see it on her face and feel it when she touched you with her hands. Culture, history, wisdom, and love were all wrapped up in Nana Hilda. Oh my Maya, you've gotten so big since I last saw you. You look so beautiful just like your mother when she was your age. Mija, what happened to your head? Hi, Nana. It's good to see you, too. I've missed you so much. Oh, my head? It's just a little bump. How did you get this bump? Um, I fell. Really? See, si, Nana, really. Of course, wise Nana Ilda knew that something was not right. The next day in science class. Maya, are you okay? What happened to your head? Yes, Mr. Sykes, I'm fine, I fell. Very well, Maya, can you tell me what this is? It's a tuning fork. My papa uses it to balance sound when he's tuning his guitar. That's correct, Maya, nice job. A tuning fork is used to tune and balance all types of instruments, including the human voice which is also an instrument. I want everybody to hold up the tuning fork that I placed on the desk in front of you and give it a little tap. Feel the power coming from it. When you tap the fork, it changes the molecules in the air and creates the sound and vibration you're feeling now. Feels cool, right students? It's good to see that bump didn't make you dopey, Maya. <laughs> See Maya seething with anger. After class was over, I went up to Maya. Hey, are we still on for Sunday? If your head hurts, we could wait, I said, hoping she wouldn't cancel on me. No, Javon, I'm looking forward to it. Sweet. Did you say sweets, Javon? Haha, <laughs> Ronald, you're too much. Fortunately, the treacherous three were listening in on our conversation. Look at the three little dorks. I bet none of them have a date for the big dance next week. Maybe they can all go together. Maybe they can wear matching outfits like us. <laughs> you three are such losers. Losers! Losers, which rhymes with schmoozer, which you should be very familiar with because if your rich parents didn't schmooze with Principal Johnson and give a big donation to the school, you would all be failing every single class. I gasp. Ronald gasped. And unfortunately for Maya, Principal Johnson was standing right behind Maya and gasped. <clears throat> Excuse me, Maya, is that so? To my office, this moment. Yes, sir. As Maya turned to walk away, Tracy stuck out her little designer shoe and tripped Maya. <laughs> Maya fell on the hard tile floor and hit her knee. The triplets gingerly walked away, and of course, Principal Johnson didn't see a thing. Ronald and I helped up Maya as she limped to the principal's office. Maya, I have to admit I am very disappointed in you. Tell your papa and nana what happened. Then you can take your dinner into your room and think about what you did. Mama, it wasn't my fault, really. Did you accuse Principal Johnson of giving those Thomas girls good grace in Jasley? Yes, Mama. Then it is your fault. Accept your responsibility and go to your room. Frustrated, Maya slumped out of her chair and did the slow walk of shame to her bedroom. A few minutes later, Nana Hilda came into Maya's room. 
Are you okay, mija? Yeah, I mean, yes, Nana Hilda, I'm fine. I don't think you're fine at all. I know what's going on, Maya. There is a girl bullying you in school, right? How did you know, Nana? I have my ways. In fact, I can tell it's more than one, isn't it? There is a number and a letter sticking in my head. A T and three. Tell me, Maya, what does that mean? How did you know that, Nana? Nana has her ways. <laughs> there are triplets whose names all start with T and they hate me. They gave me this bump on my head and made my knee hurt today. When I was your age, I had a similar issue, but it was only one girl, not three. Her name was Esmeralda. To look at her, you would think she was kind, but she was pure evil. No one would believe it when I told them all the bad things she did to me. She would punch me, kick me, and she even pulled my hair. She always said it was an accident, and everyone believed her, except my own Nana. She knew the same way I knew that someone was hurting you. When I saw my Nana that day after some particularly nasty bullying, she gave me something. Something very special, very sacred. Something I'm going to give to you. But understand that there is magic in this gift. It has the power to help you in ways you can't imagine. But it also has the power to do things that cannot be undone. Maya, our family has an amazing legacy of kings, queens, and warriors. You are a descendant of one of the most powerful tribes of the Mayan civilization, which is why your mother named you Maya. Your ancestors could do things that people can't do, like control the weather, communicate with animals, and even move objects just by thinking about them. What are you talking about, Nana? Nana Ilda was wearing a strange necklace. The chain was a leather rope. It looked worn and weathered, but strong and durable. She took it from around her neck and revealed an amulet. It was so beautiful. Only about the size of a quarter, but it was the most amazing shade of crimson red. Nana Ilda put the necklace around Maya's neck, placing one hand on her forehead and the other on the amulet. Maya thought that something dramatic but would happen, but the necklace just felt kind of cold. Then Nana Hilda began to chant. Ahora tienes el poder. Ahora tienes el poder. Ahora tienes el poder. Maya instantly felt tired. Her eyes became heavy and her mind became foggy. Sleep well, mija, for when you are awakened, the first words to come out of your mouth will be your gift. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Nana, you're bugging out. I don't believe in this hocus pocus. Mumbo jumbo, why don't you? Maya passed out, and when she awakened, her life would never be the same. Hey, Javon, are you watching the news? No, why? Put on Channel 5 News, quick! This is News Channel 5. I'm Chuck Taylor. Today's top story, a tourist helicopter crashed into Littletown Tower. The copter is dangling on a media antenna on top of the building. From what we can see, it looks like the pilot and passengers are all okay, but who knows how long the helicopter will stay attached before it comes crashing down onto the pavement. Who will save them? You'll save them, Javon, right? I think so. I've never done anything like that before. Helicopters are huge and it's really, really high. SDK, you don't have a choice. You can't just let those people Oh, hey, okay, I know, I know. I'm on my way. I can't even remember the last time I put this suit on. Part of me is so excited to be the hero again. I just wonder if I'm in over my head. I shimmied into the suit, which was getting a little tight. Gotta lay off them tacos. Then I put on the mask and headed for the window. As I passed the mirror, I could see the look of fear in my face. I was just a kid, I thought. And I stood tall, took a deep breath. I got this. I opened the window and flew. 
jetting through the air is such an amazing feeling. As a little kid, I always dreamed about how it would feel to soar among the clouds. When you're small, you can feel powerless. Everything is bigger than you. Adults, trees, buildings, everything. But now as the super duplicate, I feel strong, bold, unstoppable. Just as I was thinking that, a crow flew right into my head. Ah! Ow! I screamed. Maybe I should focus on flying and stop daydreaming before a plane hits me in the head. The city was only a few miles away, and Littleton Tower was in the center. It was the tallest structure in the city by a lot, so it was easy to spot. As I got closer, I could see the helicopter's landing skids hooked onto the tower's antenna. Now, a superhero like Wonder Woman or Superman could use their super strength to lift it up and float it gently to the ground. Well, I don't have super strength. The lightning strike that gave me abilities to shoot lightning bolts and fly didn't grace me with extra strength. Sometimes I struggle opening a jar of peanut butter, and when I do, I hand it to Denise, and in no time, ah, it's open. So if I can't open a jar of Skippy, how the heck am I gonna lift the helicopter? As I flew closer, I noticed two things, one good and one bad. Good, the blades on the helicopter weren't moving. Bad, the antenna wasn't very strong and the wind would swing the helicopter back and forth. I could see the passengers that were inside were all freaking out. And it wasn't just because they were trapped thousands of feet in the sky. They had just noticed a kid in orange in an orange superhero suit floating in midair. Hey, it's okay. I'm here to help, I yelled. They were perplexed, looking at me the way the dog looks at a vacuum cleaner. And we all know what happens when the vacuum cleaner is turned on. Panic. The sound of bending metal creaking took over the sound of my voice. And that's when the helicopter passengers really started to panic. The antenna was bending and the copter was leaning towards the side. The bend was slow, but sure. <coughs> the screams of the passengers and pilot were terrifying. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I don't have the strength to lift this thing. Maybe I could push it straight back up by flying. It's going to be okay, I yelled. A little boy who couldn't be more than six years old put his hand to the window. I could see the look of utter fear in his face. He mouthed the words, thank you. I just nodded, yes. I can do this. I can do this, I think. I went to the side of the copter that was bending and used my flying abilities to push it back upright in antenna position. It seemed to be working. The antenna was bending back, and the helicopter was back up in straight up position. I guess I pushed a little too hard, and it bent in the opposite direction. And fast, so fast, that the giant antenna snapped them out, and the helicopter started plummeting to the ground. No!